I've got three words for you. Move it march. It's working, y'all. It is working. I'm starting to get delusional enough thinking that the month in which I am nine months pregnant, March of 2024, I am going to have my best month as a reseller, as a solopreneur reseller. It could happen. And this past weekend is fueling the dream. I had over $1,500 in sales. Good stuff. Good stuff for me. If you watched my ship with me video from last week, I had a thousand dollars in sales then. And this weekend I decided to run another Posher VA sale of 40% off everything in my closet that was older than 30 days. And it just generated a whole bunch of really good sales. So I'm really, really excited to head on inside to my office because we're in the parking lot right now and get these things shipped out. The vast majority of my sales came from Poshmark. This is a good month for Poshmark for me. Um, but again, you have to be strategic in how you approach Poshmark. So I also had some good sales on Mercari. We will review everything that sold and I'll bring you along to ship with me. Let me know in the comments down below how your March is. And I think in this video, I'll just go ahead and talk about why Move It March works and the strategies I'm using to implement this. It's really a mentality too, but okay, let's head down inside. Okay, so I have 43 items to pull. Let's get started. Okay, so Move It March <laughs> or Move It Mentality, MEM for short, trademark pending. <laughs> Just kidding, kind of, is my new obsession and I am going to be adhering strictly to it. So what does it mean? Within my inventory, I have two kind of categories. I have a lot of stuff that I've had for longer than a year. When I was doing liquidation and when I was had an employee and was processing a whole lot more items, and with liquidation, I wasn't hand selecting items. That is like the number one thing I didn't like about liquidation is that I would receive a lot of things that really weren't in high demand and have a high resale value. So I have a lot of stuff like that. So that's one category, but I think everyone has uh, things that they've had for longer than three months, say. Uh, things that are just kind of sitting around, lingering. And then you have the things that you are listing right now or have been listed recently, say in the past three months. We need to move both those things for Move at March. Okay, let me keep pulling. <laughs> so for the older inventory, there are three things that I am doing to aggressively move this stuff. First, I am using Posher VA which is my automation software to send out these bulk offer sales. And I'm doing it every weekend. Next weekend, I am planning on sending out 50% off offers on everything I've had longer than a year. And because I haven't been relisting in an organized fashion, I have a lot of things that have been listed for longer than a year. And if you don't use Posture VA or some automation software, you should. I think, you know, in my humble opinion, automation software just makes generating sales so much easier. And if you want to try Posture VA, you can do so two weeks free, and then you can use my code MOGIBETH for 20% off your first month. And I really, really, really appreciate everyone who does and has used that code, so thank you. Anyway, the two other things that I am going to be doing a lot this month, I'm just started, but um, I keep saying this, but I am going to do it is price reduce things I've had longer than a year. I'm going to, I think, be pretty aggressive with it. Either do just 20% off everything or 30% off everything. And then realist. My question, I'm trying, the thing I'm trying to figure out, and my question to y'all is, do you think I should price, maybe price reduce one week and then relist the next? Or should I just do it all at once? Or should I Realist and then price reduce. I don't know. How, what would you guys what do y'all do? What would you recommend for me because to be frank? I just haven't been very Systematic in terms of those two things in the past, but I'm ready to come up with a strategy that really moves older inventory and then For moving items that I'm listing what I am trying to do is find items that are in really high demand and then price them a little bit under market value. That way they sell very quickly. And it kind of hurts your heart a little bit because you are leaving a little bit of money on the table, but it is definitely generating sales for sure. And it's increasing my sales, overall sales number. It seems to be working and I can't argue with that. 
I mean, it's as simple as that. Find things that people want and price them a little less than what other people are pricing them at. <laughs> That's, that will generate sales for you. So that is essentially my two-prong move at March strategy. Let me know in the comments down below if you're doing something similar. Spring is just a good time to do it because sales are already picking up anyway and it, you know, the spring cleaning kind of feeling, it really gives you momentum to just go all in and really be aggressive with generating sales. So this is the time I think when people are buying to do it. Don't wait until summer slowdown when people aren't buying to start being desperate. <laughs> I think, you know, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. But okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull the rest of these items, stop chit-chatting, and then we will go over what's sold. Okay, let's start shipping. So I'm actually, I think I'm going to start with my Mercari sales, then we'll move on to eBay, and then we will do the marathon of Poshmark sales. So my first sale on Mercari this weekend was a really good sale. It's from a brand that is just selling like hotcakes. I mean, talk about in-demand brand, Judy Blue. Every time I find this brand, I'm like, should I pick this up? I mean, I, okay, I guess I'll pick this up. And then I have results like this. So I don't know why I question it. Judy Blue so just a high in demand denim brand. I think most people know about it by now, but if you don't, definitely know about it and probably pick it up if you find it. So I listed this one night. This is the kind of sale I love. I listed it at night for $42 and it sold the next day on Mercari for $42. So we love to see it. And it was a pair of Judy Blue in size 14W, which I think does make a difference. But I just picked up a smaller size of Judy Blue recently. So we'll see how that does too. I do free shipping on Mercari. So after shipping and cost of goods, I got these at Goodwill for $7.99. My gross profit was $21.37. And like I said, they sold in one day. So I ship via pirate ship for Mercari right now. I am playing around with the idea, although not very seriously, of slowly starting to pre-weigh my inventory, then do calculated shipping both on eBay and Mercari. Let me know in the comments down below if you do calculated shipping and if you like it. It would just be another step in my systems, so I'm not sure if I'm really thrilled about the idea, but it would be virtually impossible for me to do it for all of my like 1700 listings that I currently have, but I could start now. I need to get a bag. I have to go drop these off at the post office. Me, nine months pregnant, lugging in like 40 packages. Next is a uh, liquidation item that I've had for a little bit of time. It's free people. I have one of these left and it is a poppy cotton polo. I had it listed for 28, received an offer for 21 and I accepted it on Mercari. Let's get this packaged up. Okay, so my cost of goods with this palette, this Free People palette that I had 870 days ago, that's when I listed this originally, was $11.34 was my cost of goods. So after fees and shipping, my, my gross profit was $2.07, but glad we're moving it. Move it March. I'm gonna say that a hundred times this video, so I'm sorry in advance. I'm glad I don't have a ton of Mercari sales like all the time because it does take me quite a while to ship compared to Poshmark. Poshmark makes shipping so easy. Next Mercari sale is another free people piece. I think this is from a different palette. Yeah, my cost of goods was really high on this one, so I'm gonna lose money, but that's okay because I've had it for 661 days. It is this Free People Knockout Sweat Slip Bodycon dress. A good piece to be selling at this time of year. It sold for $19. Really, I just wanted to move it out. So I'm happy I did. It's really cute, new without tags. Okay, let's ship this and grab this. At some point in this video, if I have time, I'm just gonna do a quick calculation of the percentage of my inventory that I've had longer than a year, it's quite high. I would love to maintain, this is my delusional thinking, maintain how much inventory I have, but really get that number move where the more of my inventory is coming from you know, things I'm listing recently. So that just means listing more. I'm just starting to get this 
drive. I don't know where it's coming from. Where I just want to really grow my reselling business. And I want to do it while having a newborn baby. <laughs> I mean, I definitely want to do it while I'm pregnant, but like, I feel like I can carry this momentum somehow. Maybe once the baby gets here, I will, that will all just let out like an air in a balloon and I will be 100% focused on raising a newborn and that is perfectly fine. But there's a part of me that's just like, let's bring baby to work. <laughs> So, we'll see. Alright, so, after shipping and cost of goods, my gross profit was negative $3.33. But I do have $11.67 being uh, deposited into my bank account. That's because I spent my cost of goods a long time ago. 661 days ago. Alright, next Mercari sale. And I had horrible sales on Mercari last month. Seasonality of the business is definitely a thing, and March is a really good month for reselling, historically, for me. Okay, and it's proving to be this year as well. So, next, we have two more sales. Oh, this was a really good one, too. Lululemon ABC Pants Skinny. I got these at Crossroads. My cost of goods was $6.10 because I used Ben's items to pay for it, but, or for part of it, but it was... $12 in the store and so I would have paid that and it would have been smart to pay that because I listed it on Mercari for 69 it sold for 69 in four days I love selling Lululemon men's pants the ABC pant does really well so let me grab that I haven't been to Crossroads in a minute I think I have so much inventory right now I'm getting a little bit overwhelmed and I really just want to get it all photographed before baby comes. So that's my going to be my goal this week is I'm not going to source until the weekend and just really try to grind it out this week and get as many things processed as possible. So after cost of goods and shipping, my gross profit on that is $45.93. Love that. I want to replicate that a million times okay but this weekend i'm definitely going to go to crossroads and i think i'm going to film it so be anticipating i think i might film a bins thrift with me even though i really love going to bins sans camera i think i might suck it up and take it with me and then also in the same day go take inventory i have plus what i find there and go to crossroads and just report Everything I'm taking and everything they accepted and everything I purchased. So those will be two fun videos. My last Mercari sale, oh yeah, was this Patagonia Morning Glory dress. And this is something I, that was in a recent Ben's haul. I had it listed for 32. Someone sent me an offer on Mercari for 24, which I accepted and sold after six days of being listed. So I'm really happy that a lot of the inventory I'm listing is selling fairly quickly. That's a sign to me that I'm picking up good inventory. I am also going to be, or it might already be out. If it's out, I'll link it up on the screen, but I'll be doing a video on what's not selling. So I'm gonna review items I have listed. I've hand selected and listed either in the past year, in the past however many months, do an audit and see what I've picked up that was a mistake. And then just try to help y'all avoid those mistakes. But yeah, if you haven't watched that yet, expect it soon. <laughs> So after cost goods and fees, my gross profit was $13.02 for that Patagonia dress. That style of dress by Patagonia, I think $25 is a good price to be expecting for it. It's kind of one of the styles within Patagonia that doesn't perform that well, but it still will sell. So worth picking up at the bins, which is where I found it. But I wouldn't pay up for it. Okay, now let's move on to eBay. I only had three sales on eBay, so I'm glad I'm not, you know, last month I was really thinking, oh, I'm an eBay seller now. <laughs> not this month. I'm following a lot of eBay sellers though. I'm trying to really approach eBay, not with a Poshmark mindset, but with an eBay mindset. That's something that I would like to do, really kind of start making that transition on eBay over the next few months. I've been following a lot of eBay sellers on YouTube and one that I would highly recommend, you've probably already heard of it because it is blowing up on YouTube and rightfully so because really 
love her recent videos is Carrie at Home. So I'll link her channel up on the screen. Really interesting. She's a tech and sports person, which if you know tech and sports, there's definitely a certain methodology he has. He's a huge eBay seller. Starting to want to get better at eBay for sure. Anyway, three eBay sales. <laughs> One of which is amazing, and two of which I'm grateful for. <laughs> okay, let's grab them. Okay, the first, and this was my only one on eBay for the longest time until like last night, is this Papina swimsuit. I got two of these at the bins recently. They both sold really fast. And this one's actually going to, this is a Portland-based brand. This is going to someone in Portland. But I found this at the bins. It's a gingham vintage style swimsuit in a size large, which is really great. And the brand is P-O-P-I-N-A. Got it at the bins for $1.05. Had it listed for $35. Received an offer for $25 plus $5.99 shipping, which I accepted. I did sell this via promoted listings. I do 7% on all my eBay listings, which I'm not recommending because... <laughs> Clearly I'm not a power seller on eBay, but that is what I've been doing. But because of those fees and because of, oh wait, I have to do shipping first. But because of those fees and my shipping costs, my gross profit was $19.43, sold within 12 days. So really good result. Definitely I am on the prowl for one piece swimsuits right now. And I would recommend you do the same, especially in larger sizes. Next is a sale I'm gonna lose money on, but that's okay. <laughs> because it's move in March and I have several of these and they're taking a long time to sell. So when I received an offer, I just went ahead and accepted it. It is a pair of Franco Sarto leather sneakers in white in a size eight. I have two more in case you're interested. I have them listed for 30 and someone sent me an offer on eBay for $14 plus $9.99 shipping, which I accepted. So after shipping and my fees, my gross profit was negative $1.15 because this came from liquidation, my last liquidation palette, which was a shoe palette in which my cost of goods was $9.81 and it took 549 days for me to lose that dollar, but <laughs> it's all right because it's moving um, and I'm getting some of my money back. Okay, my last sale was a really good one. This was featured in a recent haul. I got it at Goodwill. It's a new tag Spanx, the perfect colorless blazer. It's plus size 1X. I got it at Goodwill. I paid up $29.99 for it after checking comps and I was feeling pretty confident about it and excited about it. The night I listed it, I listed it for 150. I received an offer for 98 and I countered and I didn't make the sale. And then, so for the past week or so, I've been kicking myself like, oh, why did I not accept that offer? Well, <laughs> it would have been fine if I accepted that offer. Move it, March. I'm fine with that. But I didn't and it sold full price on eBay. So I sold it for 150 on eBay with plus $7.99 shipping. It did have, it did sell via promoted listings, but my gross profit on this one is $86.80. So very, 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 very happy about this sale. It's just one of those I paid up and it paid off and it took 18 days for it to sell. So really not that long either. I love selling Spanx right now. It's one of my favorite bread and butter brands. We're moving on to Poshmark. I just <laughs> organized all my labels. We've got at least 30 packages to get going. I'm gonna try to not ramble as much so that we can get through this in a timely fashion, but I want to preface this by two other things. I was thinking while I'm just going over my Poshmark sales, which is something I'm also doing, trying to be more systematic and aggressive about is sending bundle offers. So whenever someone likes multiple items in my closet, bundling them up and sending them an offer, of course, when someone creates a bundle for themselves, if they don't send an offer, I usually give them a few minutes because <laughs> sometimes people are still looking and, you know, they might send an offer, but sending them an offer. And I did have quite a few bundle sales from that this weekend. So that is another good sales generation strategy to use on Poshmark. Uh, that's something that's, I think, so unique to Poshmark is really having a good bundle strategy. So let's get into what's sold. Ship these packages out. The first, so on Friday, it actually sparked me uh, wanting to run another sale was that I was having a horrible 
sales day on Friday. I literally had one sale and it was this one. Then I had another sale, but they requested to cancel, of course. So I was really just bummed out by noon on Friday and I was like, okay, I'm gonna do something about this. And then I ran my po sale via Posture VA, which again, highly recommend. But this was my one sale that I did receive. I've had this, I got it through liquidation, had it for a very long time. It's very cute. It's L'Academy, which is a Revolve in-house brand. And it's a really cute, sweater. My cost of goods was $9.05 and I had it listed for $48. Someone sent me an offer for $25 and I said move it March. Yes, <laughs> I will accept. And so my gross profit was $10.95 and it took 991 days to sell. I have way too many items that are that old or older, but I was great, very, very grateful for that sale because like I said, is the only one I had on Friday before sending out bulk offers. So my first sale to be generated from my bulk 40% off offers on everything that had been listed for longer than 30 days was this pair of new Attack Good American jeans. They're size 25. I had them listed for $60 and they sold 40% off for 36 plus discounted shipping, which gave me a gross profit of $16.61. These are skinny jeans with distressing and a smaller size. They are new Attack Good American, but I am very happy. Like a few years ago, I would have been really upset to get 36 for them, but I am very happy to get 36 for them today. And I'm very happy that they moved. Did I say how long I've had them? 694 days, yeah. They are cute. I love the wash on these. They're high rise and they're new with tag. My next sale was something that I picked up at the bins that I think I tried to take to Crossroads and they didn't accept, so I went ahead and listed it. And it was this Madewell Market popover shirt. I got it at the bins for 84 cents. I've had it quite a while. I've had it 449 days. It's an older style Madewell. So I had it listed for 20 and it sold in the sale for $12 plus discounted shipping, which gave me a gross profit of $6.19. I mean, I probably would not pick this up again, but it is cute and I'm really glad I got to get a new home. One way you can tell that it's older style is it says 1937 under the Madewell name. That is their older tag. Quick way to know without having to look at the materials tag that it's older, but of course the materials tag has the season on it, so you can see what year it's from. And then I, my next sale was also made well. This was a better sale in that it sold in 88 days. It was a pair of 10 inch high rise skinny crop jeans in pure white. This I got at the bins for 91 cents 88 days ago, so that's great. I had a list of 40, they sold for 24 with discounted shipping, which gave me a gross profit of $16.20. Seven cents. Okay, my next sale was something that I got at a regular Goodwill fairly recently. It's a brand I love selling, Icebreaker. Love selling Icebreaker, love selling Smart Wool. And so this actually had a small flaw on it or else I think it would have sold a lot faster for a little bit more money. But it was this Icebreaker, super fine wool Henley top, got for $7. I had it listed for 30 and it sold for 18 plus discounted shipping, which gave me a gross profit of $5.38 which again, like I said, would have performed better had I had not had the flaw. It only took 33 days to sell, so really not bad. And at the bins, I will pick up Icebreaker and Smart Wool with small flaws and just disclose them because these are oftentimes just base layer items or hiking items and so people don't really care if has a tiny hole, especially because it's wool, oftentimes does, or if it has like a little bit of pilling. And then next up, I did thrift these at a regular Goodwill too, and they took way longer to sell than I thought they would, because this was a brand I used to really love selling, and I, honestly, because of these shorts, and maybe, maybe a few other things I've picked up, but I cooled off on picking it up, and I think I might try picking it up, you know, at the bins and see if I want to try it out again. But the brand is Cupcakes and Cashmere. And this was a pair of new with tag. 
they're black, so I gotta use this lint roller. New with tag shorts, really, really cute. That is so long, 1,138 days. Wow, I thrifted them a long time ago. I think they were in a YouTube video though, so I have been on YouTube for a long time, which is not a surprise to anyone. I just surpassed my 300th upload recently. I guess I can call myself a YouTuber. Anyways, I had these listed. I had price reduced them, I think recently, to 35, and so they sold for $21 with discounted shipping, which gave me a gross profit of $679, because I did pay $7.99 for them. I'm very, very happy that they sold. Move it March. These didn't deserve to sit in my inventory for so long, so I hope whoever bought them loves them. Okay. And then another Move It March candidate. This was an NBD Ambrosia bodysuit that I had 941 days. I did do a price reduction on this recently, I think as well. Reduced it to 38. And so it sold for 22 with discounted shipping. My cost of goods was $9.05. And so I made $6.53. NBD, it's an in-house revolved brand and I would say Definitely check home before paying up for it. Some pieces can, I think, still do really well. There's not a ton of Revolve that I come across in Portland. I feel like the population here is, isn't a huge customer base for in-house Revolve brands, but I sometimes come across it. It's, it's going to someone in Oregon, so. Okay, this next deal I've had for so long, and it has haunted me because it's like, why do I have this still? It is a fabulous brand, a brand I dream of selling. But I've had it 1,233 days. Like it was one of the oldest pieces in my inventory. It is Zimmerman, this corsage pleated blouse in this python snake print. I've done multiple price reductions on this. My final price reduction was to $160. I probably just had it overpriced. And so it sold in the sale for 96 plus discount shipping, which is so great and gave me a gross profit of $35.63 because my cost of goods was very high. This was a really expensive liquidation palette, but I got a lot of really good pieces in it. My cost of goods was $39.15. Yeah, it just took so long to sell. I'm so, so happy it did sell. But yeah, if you don't know about Zimmerman, very much a bolo brand. You can find pieces that sell for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Because I've never, I don't think I've ever found it in the wild. Next is a, okay, so I haven't had this one a thousand days. <laughs> Let me grab it. I've only had this one 85 days, which is not bad. I got it at the bins. It's Toad & Co. Ursa Tunic. I had it listed for 30 and it sold for 18 with discounted shipping, which gave me a gross profit of $9.83. I'm picking up more and more Toad & Co., especially at the bins. That along with like Title IX or two brands I'm kind of playing around with, seeing what, what works, what doesn't. There are a few brands like bread and butter brands like that that I'm starting to experiment with. Did I say it sold for 18? It sold for 16. Yeah, 16 with discounted shipping. Okay, next is another piece I've had for a while. I have multiples of this. I got it through liquidation. It's an in-house Nordstrom brand called Leaf. This is a cardigan, open front, size extra small, and color burgundy. I do have multiples of these. I sold so many of these. <laughs> not even, not just this size. I have it in multiple colors and multiple sizes. That's the thing with liquidation. You don't control what you get. And you have a palette that just has a hundred of one style. So anyway, this actually sold for 30 percent off. I have it listed for 25. It sold for 17 and with discounted shipping and that gave me a gross profit $4.38 and it took 1,199 days to sell. Okay, my first bundle sale of the weekend. Two items. One I thrifted fairly recently at Goodwill and the other I got through liquidation. I loved this piece and so I overpriced it. <laughs> Which... I used to do a lot. I'm trying to do less of because of that it just sat for a long time. But first was a pair of Madewell, the perfect vintage flare jeans. I will pick up some Madewell styles for the right price at Goodwill. Uh, these I picked up for $9.99. I had them listed for $60 and within this bundle they sold for $33 because the bundle came out to $88. So it gave me a gross profit of $16.41 and it only took 65 days to sell. Happy with the performance of these Madewell jeans. I had a lot of interest in these jeans, so 
That's always a good sign. And then next was this Tularosa James Plaid Faux Shirling jacket. I really wanted to keep this, and maybe I should have. <laughs> because I could have been wearing it for these 934 days, but I'm glad that it did sell this weekend. And it sold for $55, which gave me a gross profit of $34.95, which is good. It just took 934 days to sell, so. Okay, let's get it packaged up. Okay, my next sale, I should have gotten more for these. They should have sold within 30 days, but I overpriced them and I paid the price. And so that's kind of what I mean when I just price a little bit under market value and they'll sell fast. That is my strategy moving forward, but they are a pair of Wari pants. I got these at Goodwill for $9.99. I listed them at $89. Honestly, if I listed them at $80, $79, they would have sold really fast. And I think I probably, right when I listened them, received an offer for more than what they eventually sold for, but sometimes that's how it happens. Learning my lesson the hard way. You can overprice even some of the hottest brands like Bori. Anyway, so I had them listed for 89. They sold in this sale for 53 with discounted shipping, which is still good. Still made a profit of $30.39. But yeah, I, I think I should have been able to sell them for 60, but that's fine. 60, 65. Okay, this next sale is one that I found during my inventory audit that had not been listed, but that I had for a long time. It's just sitting there unlisted. I decided to accept an offer on it. It was this rag and bone Marcella blouse, really beautiful, 100% silk. I listed it for 70 and I received an offer for 35, which in the spirit of Move It March, I just went ahead and accepted. So that gave me a gross profit of $22 and it only took 63 days to sell. So a couple months, not bad. Could I have waited longer and made a little bit more? I don't know probably, but we don't think like that <laughs> with this move it mentality. We just move it. Oh, this was a good sale. I just listed these. They're a pair of Sundance embroidered pants. I think I featured these in a recent haul or a thrift with me. I can't remember. And I had them listed for 38 and someone sent me an offer for 34, which is obviously very reasonable. I was very happy about that. And so I accepted it and it, I got them at Goodwill for $7.99. So my gross profit was $19.21 after fees, cost of goods, and sold in two days. Very happy. That's a good sale. I really, Sundance is a brand I would like to pick up more. Okay, another Move It March exemplary candidate. <laughs> I love these jeans, which is I think why I overpriced them and didn't sell them. I guess I, that's a theme of today's video. But these are rag and bone denim. They had this snap detail along the ankle. I got these through online arbitrage for $13.18. I had them listed like for $100 or, or over that. Potentially, I can't remember for the longest time. And then I recently, in the fall, did a price drop on a lot of things. Listed them at 65. Someone sent me an offer for 20, I countered. Then they sent me an offer for 25, I countered. And then they sent it for to me for 25 again. And I was like, am I gonna accept it? I've had them for 731 days. It's time to accept that these aren't gonna go for what <laughs> you want them to go for and that you paid too much for them. But I mean, I still made $6.82, so I didn't lose money, but. So while my camera died, I packaged up four packages. So we'll just go over them really quickly. What sold style. The first was this pair of, I, this is another item I loved when I listed it. I think I just priced it too high, so it sat for a long time, but this is a brand I'm definitely cooling off on. New Without Tech Legendre Ryland High Rise Jeans. Again, really cute. And back in the day, this style did really well. So I think I just overpriced it and got it through liquidation. My cost of goods was $6.63. I lowered the price recently to $50. So it sold for $30 with discounted shipping. Still had a gross profit of $15.35. Not bad, but took one 
1,368 days to sell. So long time, very happy that they sold. And then next was a Everlane 100% linen sweater that I got at the Benz, I think, I'm pretty sure, for $1.95. I had it listed for $38 and it sold for $26 plus discounted shipping, which gave me a gross profit of $16.83 and took 150 days to sell, so about five months, which isn't too bad. If I would have priced it lower, I would have moved faster probably. This is a, I remember thrifting this piece. This was an experiment. I had never heard of this brand. It's a men's brand. It did take a little while to sell, but did sell. The brand is Singer Sargent. I didn't see a lot of comps on eBay for this brand or on Poshmark for this brand, so uh, when I picked it up, it was a little bit of a gamble, but it was, a, it was a reversible puffer vest. Cute. And I had it listed for $65, and it sold for $39 with discounted shipping, which gave me a gross profit of $16.19. And it sold after 230 days. Similarly, another men's piece I picked up at Goodwill for $12.99 was this ATM Anthony Thomas Melillo knit blazer. Also had a list of for 65. It sold for 45. Uh, so 30% off plus discounted shipping. So I had a gross profit of $20.99. And it took a little less time. Well, less time. It took 157 days to sell. So that's a brand that actually does sell fairly consistently for me, but it always takes several months. So I'm definitely more selective with it, but it's like a brand I would definitely pick up at the bins. I'd probably be excited to find it at the bins. So that's where I left off. So next, I actually have one more of these in this size, and then I think I have several in a smaller size. But this is a brand that is very expensive. It is in philanthropy, and I received a bunch of these derby jogger sweatpants in a liquidation palette a while ago. And so I'm slowly selling them. I think I have them listed for 50 now. I had them listed for more previously. Yeah. And so I received an offer for 25, which I accepted. And that gave me a profit. My cost of goods on these was very high. It was $19.77, which is probably why. Otherwise, I probably would have priced them lower. But then maybe I should just go ahead and price them lower anyway. Certain styles by this brand will do well, but certain very certain styles so anyway my gross profit was 23 cents and i had a thousand one thousand seventeen days so this i got you know remember during covid when tie-dye everything was tie-dye uh, this was during that period but i'm really 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 happy that they sold and then next oh this was a good sale so this was the sale that actually got canceled on friday but then it sold, I think on Saturday or Sunday, for $5 less than what it previously sold for, but that's fine. I featured this in a recent haul. It is a J. Crew block printed quilt jacket. I got it Crossroads and so, so, so cute. It is a recent style from last year. Got it at Crossroads for $9.34 because of my bins items conversion. And I had it listed for 79 and I received an offer for 55 I had previously sold it for 60 Oh, actually, I think, no, I someone sent me an offer for 50 and I, and I countered for 55 But they accepted it, thankfully, and so I was like, oh man, am I going to regret that? Because 55 is 30% off of 79 I had just listed it. It sold after four days. So, and I knew I had just sold it for 60 So, anyways, very, very happy about this sale. I made $34.66 from it. Yeah, I had this quite a while. This was from Liquidation. It is a Hugo Boss top. I think I had recently reduced the price on this. I received it in Liquidation for $6.44. I had it listed for $60, so it sold for $36 in that 40% off sale. With discounted shipping, my gross profit was $20.34, so still great, but it did take 905 days to sell. I do like selling Hugo Boss. I found a dress recently at the bins from Hugo Boss. I'm excited to get listed this week, but it does sometimes take a while to sell. Hopefully not six, 900 days. That's probably me just having overpriced. And once I 
price reduced it and then ran the sale it sold and then happy to sell this sweater it is a new tag made well sweater that i got in liquidation size extra small really really cute style i did have it for 1178 days i think i recently reduced the price on this as well and i had it listed for 45 it sold for 27 with discounted shipping which gave me a gross profit of ten dollars and nine cents i feel this pile of package or er, of labels getting shorter so that makes me happy next was another liquidation piece that i've had for quite a long time and i recently price reduced it i think pretty significantly is this new tag understated leather which is a good bolo brand to know they had a collaboration with revolve it was a zip mini skirt i sold well, i think several pieces from this brand and you know, they'll perform well but i think this one had flaws and i just had it overpriced so i reduced the price to 85 and it sold in this sale for 51 plus discounted shipping which gave me a gross profit of 29.21 which is great but it took over 1300 days to sell so sometimes it's your fault sometimes you just have a price too high gotta come to terms with that okay next is from that free people palette that i've mentioned previously in, in virtually every video <laughs> this is an all mine oversized t-shirt and i had it listed for i think 35 and i received a offer for 20 i think there's a version of me that would have countered that but not the move in march version of mogi beth <laughs> Mogi Beth went ahead and accepted that offer and so i'm not gonna talk about not myself in third person sorry but gave me a gross profit of four dollars and 66 cents and i had it for 863 days i think i have one more of these in a size small or that might have been my last one i can't remember slowly selling off that inventory and then okay i had a bundle sale of these two things they're both from liquidation and they're both items i have multiples of let me grab them okay so first was this l'academy which i mentioned earlier is an in-house revolve brand Razio mini dress i have many of these it's really cute and i have them listed for 58 this sold in this bundle for 34 dollars 33 which gave me a gross profit of 14 dollars 72 and i had this one for 1141 days and like i said i have many more <laughs> That will take even longer to sell but that's fine and then this new tag i'm i'm hopeful i'll sell off this style the remainder of what i have on this style the free people commander cut off camo short received in that free people palette i have it listed for 40 this one sold for 23 dollars and 67 cents and my gross profit was seven dollars and 60 cents and it took 878 days to sell a lot of other youtubers don't talk about the gross profit when it comes to per item i also don't mention how long it takes to sell let me know in the comments down below if that is something that you like hearing or if i should just talk less and just share what sold and for how much and then i can just share my overall gross profit at the end if that's what y'all prefer i can definitely do that okay and then i had another bundle this was a mixture of things from different places so first was a liquidation piece i have multiples of these it's this lovers and friends slouchy raw edge sweatshirt got through liquidation i have them listed for 58 and this one sold for 33 dollars 87 within this palette which gave me a gross profit of 10 dollars 67 and sold after 1060 days but then i got these lululemon wonder under lounge pants at crossroads recently my cost of goods was low because of my bins conversion at two dollars and two dollars and thirty cents i had these listed for 50 and they sold within this bundle for 29 dollars and 20 cents which gave me a gross profit of 21 dollars and six cents i think i'll package these two together actually and then i had a sale of these athleta stash pocket leggings which i got at the bins for a dollar and one cent and i had these only 95 days had them i just actually just price reduced them to 29 dollars, and then they sold for 16 dollars and 93 cents and that gave me a gross profit of 12 dollars and 54 cents 
and like I said, 95 days. So yeah, one's from liquidation, one's from the bins, and one's from Crossroads, representing the various ways to get inventory for me. Okay, we're in the home stretch with four more packages. Whew, I'm getting tired. <laughs> I didn't eat lunch. Okay, Mondays are always a tiring day for me because I have music class with Billy in the morning and then a lot of shipping in the afternoon. Okay, y'all. Well, my camera died again for the billionth time <laughs> in this video. I just went ahead and packaged up my remaining four sales. So I'll just walk through those real quick with you. The first one of those four was this Eliza J Brushstroke Maxi Dress. This is back in the day when I would pick up basically anything Eliza J decently priced at Goodwill. Now I try to stick to larger sizes and more substantial pieces. I got this at Goodwill for $7.99. I had it listed for $50. I might have even price reduced it recently. I don't know. And it sold for $35 with discounted shipping. And so 30% off, which gave me a gross profit of $17.99, which is good, but it took 405 days to sell, so a little over a year. But very happy that it did sell. It was a size four, which I think is why it took so long to sell. And then this one sold really fast. It was this Patagonia Nano Puff Jacket. In fact, it was in a recent haul. Yeah, no, it was in a recent thrift with me which I will link up on the screen in case you missed it. I was on the fence on whether to pick this up or not at Goodwill because it did have a corporate logo embroidered on the shoulder. It was a black jacket with a black logo, so it wasn't super visible, but they wanted $19.99 for it. So I debated on whether to pick it up, but I did pick it up and I'm glad I did because even though it didn't produce a huge gross profit, it sold really fast and for a decent profit. So paid $19.99, listed for $69, and it sold for 30% off for $48. And then that gave me a gross profit of $16.39. So I made less than what I paid for it, but I still made, you know, 17 bucks almost, uh, which I, and, and it sold next day. So sold in one day. So I would probably do that again if I had the option. It did also receive a lot of interest on Mercari as well. So, and then I had a bundle sale of two things. One was this pair of Tiki leggings. I'd never heard of this brand. I found it at the bins. It was an experiment. It did take a little while to sell. I got it for 97 cents and I listed it for 30. And in this bundle, it sold for 18, which gave me a gross profit of $13.43, but it took 502 days to sell. So I don't know if I would pick up Tiki again. There were these cute unicorn leggings. So that was another reason why I wanted to pick them up, but glad that they sold. And then this new attack, Free People James bandana pullover. I'm selling through these. In fact, I just sold my last one in this color and in this size today. So don't have this one anymore but it was in my free people palette and listed for 60 in this bundle it sold for 36 which gave me a gross profit of $17.46 and took 860 days to sell and then my last sale of the weekend was really really happy about this sale was this Levi's suede Sherpa trucker jacket I paid way too much for this. I got it in Austin actually when I was there a couple years ago. It was a purchase I just regretted making. So when I received an offer in which I made my money back, I quickly accepted and was happy to do so. So I paid $26.95 for this. I had, listed, I had lowered the price to $90 and I received an offer for $42. So I accepted that and that gave me a gross profit of $6.65 took 857 days to sell. So I'm just, <laughs> was like uh, almost my favorite sale of the weekend because I was just so happy and relieved that it sold. I run into pieces like that, like often at places like Crossroads, but sometimes even at Goodwill and they'll always price it up and I always pass. I'm just very, very selective with Levi's and I'll get it at the bins, but I'm really weary of <laughs> buying it at our Goodwills especially because they price it up so high. But anyway, my total sales, baby is like, oof, moving. My total sales for this weekend were $1,580.97. Woohoo, sound effect. <laughs> and then my gross profit, so what I took home at the end of the day 
it's almost 740 it was 739.55 so that's great for me for three days doing this all by myself and doing this nine months pregnant and i got all my packages wrapped up but before we go as long as my camera doesn't die i wanted to share two items that i listed last night that sold today i'll ship these out tomorrow but i was just so excited that they sold so fast and so they're just styles to know so i just wanted to share them real quick i actually had a good sales day today had about 250 dollars worth of sales all on poshmark and it wasn't generated by you know the sale so fingers crossed this continues but i just got to keep listing first and this was in a recent thrift with me this is aloe hats especially i don't know this style potentially bolo i'm just going to keep my eye out in the hat section for aloe going forward because I listed this last night for 49 it retails for 58 they don't make this colorway anymore so maybe that's why it sold so fast I woke up I listed it late last night woke up it had sold on Poshmark but I also had six people liking it on Mercari someone sent me an offer on Mercari for 25 so it was just uh, so aloe hats if you're, if you're gonna go through the hat section look for aloe I made $21.19 for it because the other thing about our Goodwills is they don't price hats up very high so sold for 34 in one day and then I took a gamble on these I never I, I don't know if y'all noticed but I never sell sneakers I'm not a sneaker seller at all I don't know anything about sneakers but I saw these at Crossroads and I was like these are so cute and there are these Nike Air Max 270 Bowfin sneakers really good condition I paid you know full price I didn't subsidize it with Ben's items they're half off at Crossroads for $24.46. And they do have one small flaw. So I listed them for $94 and I woke up to an offer for $70, accepted it, and that gave me a gross profit of $31.54. And they sold, you know, in hours, like 12 hours or less. But anyway, those were two sales. I was like, there's no better feeling than when you list something the night and wake up in the morning and it's old so just want to share that with y'all because now i know i'm going to start keeping my eye out for i'm going to try to <laughs> try my luck at nike like cute styles i think more often sneakers just really intimidating me for some reason and then aloe hats but anyway thanks so much for watching y'all this was a long video thank you so much matt for editing this <laughs> and thank you so much to me for <laughs> filming it because I'm 37 weeks pregnant today, y'all. Oh my god. Any day now. Yeah, thanks so much for watching this. Really appreciate y'all. I'm excited for what's to come in March. And hopefully we can keep up the momentum. Move it March. Keep it moving. Alright, love y'all. Bye.